The world of Minecraft is a weird one. Everything's made of blocks, dirt floats but sand falls, teleportation and trans-dimensional portals are just sort of allowed, the world stops at bedrock before an infinite void, it's definitely unusual. But in many ways, it's only weird when you compare it to our home planet, Earth. Out of the 300 million planets we expect to exist, in the 5,000 we currently know of, are there any that, potentially, could become home to a real-world Minecraft? It sounds like a pipe dream, but it turns out, the answer might be yes. Today, we visit LHS 1140B, the real-life Minecraft planet. In 2015, somebody else actually had the same idea. PBS. Yeah, in a surprising twist of events, the last time this topic was really explored in depth was when Be Smart, a YouTube channel run by the public broadcasting service, made their own theory on whether a real planet Minecraft could exist. Their conclusion? No. The gravity made no sense, it was a cube with a cube moon and a cube sun that would be dead around the edges, and it was also so big, 900,000 times more massive than our sun, that it wouldn't be a planet, it would be a star. Essentially, it was a disaster. There was absolutely no shot that Minecraft could actually exist. But, despite the reputation of PBS, I think they're wrong. Even though they did a very good job explaining what their version of Planet Minecraft would look like, the numbers were all wrong, and that skewed the entire project. I think I just might be able to do one better. But before I say absolutely anything else, we need to do some research. Gravity. The gravity in Minecraft is not consistent. Players fall really fast, blocks fall pretty fast or not at all, many projectiles are only a bit faster than here at home, and mob projectiles like fireballs or wither skulls fall at about four times the acceleration of Earth. But if we choose to measure just one of these groups, in this case players and other living things since I'd consider them most important, we can find an answer. According to various experiments ran over the course of the last decade, Minecraft's gravity has been calculated using a variety of methods to somewhere between 32 and 33 meters per second per second, with a few outliers of 28, 18, 36, etc. All most likely errors in calculation or experiments that were too small. We can test this ourselves though, and rather easily. Using a model for the equation of motion for freefall in a viscous liquid by the physics math wizard, which I definitely found through a Minecraft video of a guy that already did all this work before me, but we don't talk about that. We can fall a few times for a very long time, plot the points on a graph, calculate the slope, plug it into the equation, and add in the values from one of our falls for distance and time. This guy had to divide by 2 fifths squared because he used a hopper clock for time, but I am the proud owner of an internet connection that can use Google's stopwatch, so we go straight to the answer of about 32.65 block lengths, or meters, per second squared. There, gravity, done. But, of course, there's a little more than that to figure out. Remember how they claimed their world was like 69 billion meters wide? Well, uh, no. Even though that wouldn't be the largest object in the entire universe, that title goes to the Hercules Corona Borealis Great Wall, which is 1.38 E15, or 1 quadrillion 380 trillion times wider, it's nearly 5400 times the width of Earth, and 1585 times wider than the largest rocky planet in the known world, TOI 849b. So that number is not a very good choice. That's how long you can go before chunks start getting overwritten because there's too much data. But your computer would die before that point, the game would die even earlier, and most importantly, there's a border at 30 million in every direction, making a width of 60 million meters and a radius of 30 million the de facto dimensions of Minecraft's Earth. Oh, and they said it was a cube, but uh, let's just ignore that entirely. Yes, Mojang shows the world as a cube in concept art, but they also showed pink dolphins and monkeys, and those never happened, so frankly, I don't trust them, not to mention the fact that a cubic planet is sadly impossible, despite what some 19th century German nutjob claimed about some planet just past Neptune. So there we are. A base for a planet of Minecraft. A massive planet, 60,000 kilometers wide, with a force of gravity more than three times stronger Longer than our Earth. And not just that, but one that won a 1 in 100 lottery, potentially supporting life. Now we know what planet Minecraft would look like. The question is, does it exist? It turns out that question is both way easier and way harder to answer than either of us expected. 
they tend to go back and forth a bit. For example, how in the world am I supposed to find data on every single planet? There is no organized database of every finding, since many of them are likely private, and even some of the public ones are only released in research papers and collections from each individual organization behind them, and not some library of Alexandria for astronomical knowledge. Despite the complicated nature of even beginning the search though, we do have a place to start. Exo.mast. This is, to my knowledge, the most comprehensive and updated list of exoplanets available to the public. Comprised of every known find from exoplanets.org, the TESS Exoplanet Telescope of NASA, and NEXI, the Exoplanet Science Institute that's also from NASA. So getting a list, although not a perfect one, wasn't too hard. Now though, the difficulty comes from checking our data. We figured out that Minecraft has a gravity of about 32.5 meters per second squared, but ExoMass doesn't use that metric for their surface gravity. Instead, they use log base 10 centimeters per second squared. So instead of just doing the thing, I gotta multiply the thing by 100, and then high school calculus comes in clutch with Desmos taking care of logarithms and whatever, and then we're done. Easy. I'm looking for around 3.5 log 10 centimeters per second squared of surface gravity. Great, cool, nice. Save all the planets within a little bit of that. Done. Out of the 16,000 important space things on Exomast in the history of ever, there's like 180 that fit our criteria. But now it's down to the size. This should be easier, right? After all, surely they can't mess up size. Except they did, because for zero apparent reason, it is measured in terms of the radius of Jupiter, cause space people like making things hard for me, clearly. Alright, Planet of Minecraft would have a radius of 30k kilometers, Jupiter has one of 69,911, divide the first by the second and we got 0 0.429. Easy. Looked it up on Exomast and… nothing. Basically every single planet in the database, at least that falls within our gravity range, is between 1 and 1.5 times the radius of Jupiter. When you search for anything, even under 1 Jupiter radii, those 182 results narrow down to 55. And going down the list, everything looks absolutely useless. Nothing we could live on, nothing we could even stand on considering that nearly everything here is a floating ball of gas. That is, until we reach our saving grace. LHS 1140b, the real life planet Minecraft. LHS 1140b is a relatively new discovery, first spotted by the M Earth project in 2017, but it made waves when it was first seen. The reason why? Out of the 5,000 plus planets known to humans today, LHS 1140b was a 1 in 100 habitable exoplanet, a planet we could live on. And with the knowledge we have today, LHS 1140b is near perfect. It orbits a dwarf star, one just like our sun, and the spacing and atmosphere gives it a comfortable temperature, estimated at around 73 degrees Fahrenheit or 23 degrees Celsius. The surface gravity is, again, near perfect, at 31.8 meters per second squared. At least according to my math, cause Wikipedia gives a different gravity than exomass, which gives a different gravity than exoplanets, which is where I did my math, so who knows. The planet is 4% water, which means we wouldn't be dying of thirst anytime soon with the right technology. And the width is about a third of what we need, so uh, missed the mark on that one, but it's smaller than Jupiter, which is honestly all I care about anymore. On top of all of that, it's only 40 light years away. We theoretically could visit the planet and even come back in human lifetime. After all of our research, we finally have an answer, and a pretty decent one at that. LHS 1140b is the real life planet Minecraft. We may not be able to live there yet, and it might not be filled of blocky endermen picking up blocky pieces of dirt and killing blocky guys named Steve, but it's the closest we may get for a very long time, and it is very close. Recently, the James Webb Space Telescope was launched into the sky, and with a telescope that's nine times stronger than the previous record, who knows what we're going to find. A few years ago, a planet Minecraft was a fantasy. Today, we've gotten very close, and soon, it will likely be a reality. Yeah, this was a weird one, wasn't it? Definitely not what I'm used to, but I'm branching out anyway, starting a few new series over the summer if everything goes well, so hopefully you'll enjoy those, and I especially hope you enjoyed this. 
Thank you all for watching, and before you go, I would highly recommend following my Twitch, MCBYT Live, where I'll be streaming this summer, as well as joining my Discord, link in the description, which is just a generally nice place to be in. And of course, let's not forget a huge shout out to Manicube for sponsoring the video, play.manicube.com for some amazing parkour, tons of other game modes, you know the drill, show them some love. That's all I've got for you today though, so thanks again, stay safe, and have yourselves a very good one. Peace, peace.